Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is GMC TV. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Sir Brian Burridge of Leonardo. Sir Brian, Leonardo, it's a name change, isn't it? It's uh, not only a name change, but it's part of the journey of transforming the whole company, changing what was Finn Mechanica from a holding company to a trading company, divisionalizing the standalone businesses, tightening up the agility, removing any um, any uh, duplication in investment and ensuring that we can react to the market at a speed that's appropriate. Now, I've listened to your talk here today. Leonardo is a big inward investor in the UK. Why is the UK so important? Well, there are a number of reasons um, which um, stimulated us to come here in the first place. I guess the first is that it is the largest defence market in Europe defence equipment market in Europe, um, the most open, but it's also the most competitive. And then uh, it's a great springboard for exports and uh, Europe will find it very difficult to support its defence industrial sector on the basis of domestic orders, so exporting is very, very important. And then sitting below that, UK has a great skills base, not big enough, but very talented, a bit too old for sure, and we've got to do something about that has very good, highly developed supply chains, uh, which uh, have been in the sector for a good long time, as well as new entrants who come from other sectors and bring innovation. It has um, a very good science base, and I think that's one of the big important issues for an inward investor who creates intellectual property onshore. So <coughs> three of the top 20 technology and engineering universities are in the UK, and at any one time we'll have, well, I don't know, 50, contracts with 30 universities. So uh, all in all, this ability to, uh, to both sell domestically and export is very, very important. Now, the military sector has been under quite a bit of pressure recently with cuts in budgets and so on, and there's been a lot of a shift to buying things off the shelf. How is that affecting how you look at the market? Well, it's, uh, it, it's certainly an important factor because um, you have to be competitive, and we know that we wouldn't be competitive in the export market if we weren't competitive in the domestic market. That said, we find that the UK has spent some $20 billion in the US over the period 2007 to 2014 inclusive. Um, about $5 billion of that has been through um, uh, the FMS program, Foreign Military Sales program, and a lot of the rest is not competitive, um, or rather is not achieved through competition. So um, <clears throat> when it comes to thinking about this current government's view of a prosperity agenda, of the importance of making sure that every pound of public money spent is really leveraged into the broader economy, then it raises questions for us if a significant amount of uh, investment or expenditure goes offshore. There's a big move towards electronic warfare, and if I can lump cyber security into that, have we taken our eye off the ball? <coughs> um, we were slow on the latter on cyber security. I think um, as a nation, we were pretty slow to pick up on the uh, significance of the threat. The defence industrial sector, in partnership with the MOD, is actually leading the way in uh, the way in which we have now configured the cyber security of both from the primes and then down through the supply chains because that's not easy with in our case you know nearly f well over 1500 small and medium-sized enterprises and each one of those has got to be robust in a cyber sense uh, but i think yes as a nation i think we're a bit slow on the uptake but we're accelerating now in electronic warfare well it used to be our bread and butter in the cold war it's very important and uh, we spent a lot of time both investing in it, but also understanding it, understanding the limitations, understanding what the other side did. I think we were lulled into a false sense of security when the wall came down. I think um, uh, our um, experience in Bosnia in the early days in the Balkans, to a certain extent in the Iraq war, both Iraq wars, um, and in Afghanistan, led us to believe that maybe it wasn't quite as important. Of course, Libya, where we came across double-digit SAMs, and then uh, Syria more recently, have really woken people's attention. 
and uh, a number of our export customers are, the, are of the same view. So uh, we have been sleepwalking, as it were, around EW, but not anymore. And, f and finally, there's a lot of talk about everybody committing true budgets to the NATO membership. Do you think that's going to happen? Are we going to get a knock-on effect and greater investment? In well, there are two, uh, two aspects <coughs> at, at, um, in play there. Uh, the first is the threat, however you define it. Um, the threat is about intentions and capability. A new kid on the block, a pretty aggressive Russia, for example. So people will wonder, European states will wonder about their own security. They'll wonder about their contribution in terms of the Article 5 guarantee, or at least they should be wondering. Equally, on the other side of the Atlantic, um, we sense a growing exasperation from US colleagues, uh, particularly on the Hill and also in the administration, to say, come on, Europe should do more. And there will come a time when uh, the US says, no, enough is enough. And uh, that will be a real wake-up call for Europe. So, Brian, thank you very much. Pleasure.